you know, in high school, kids will think about things like what they're going to do with the rest of their lives and that, but it isn't really until that, like that sophomore or junior of college, it becomes real and they have to come up yeah. with something and boy, that's when just very fruitful ministry can happen. When yeah. They, start to realize, you know, wait a second here, I do need a career. I do need to figure out if I'm going to be married or not. But you know, yeah. I'm gonna, I do need to figure out if God's called me to be a priest or not. And it, uh, in a weird way, that little bit of normal life crucible that everybody goes through, yep. that you have to take that step is a neat time. And I love, you know, St. Olaf is, uh, you know, would be... I hate using this term, but it's for lack of a better word, um, better term. It's the only one I can think of of a, of a typical parish. You know, it's not a specialty ministry. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's that's beautiful too. And of course, you got youth and that kind of stuff. But you primarily now are working with adults mm-hmm. that are they pretty much they're defined. You know, yeah, they are who they are, and, and that that change is different and slower um, in the older years. And it's just, it's a very, it's the two ministerial realities are are very fruitful, but very different to work in. Was that a hard adjustment for you? It was. Um, I didn't realize how high school and college kids have a completely different set of ministerial needs than adults do. Part of that's just common sense, you know, they're growing up. But... Adults get annoyed with things that kids don't get annoyed with and mm-hmm. vice versa. Yeah, yeah. And so, ironically, one of the biggest transition points for me into going into a typical parish was not understanding why some of my adult parishioners would get worked up about certain things. <laughs> and I'm just like, what's the big deal? Right. And right. mainly because I've, for, um, we just had seven college ministry for six, 13 years of one mentality of what priorities are. Yeah. It took a little while for me to to re calibrate my priesthood towards a different sense of what people see as priorities. Yeah. Um, and um, and it's not to say that one is better than the other. It's both are specific to the, the stages of life that people are at, but uh, it is a, it is something that and needs I to... I don't think that's hit me till now, and it probably should have a long, long time ago, that when when we were, when like as a lay person working with a priest, to think about where this priest has been through mm-hmm. his priesthood, so so if I was the person that works with left him right here. in uh, in like an adult formation capacity, and in, in, in like a priest like you, like you was in high school, you know, working with high school students for seven years, to to think about that that it doesn't just click in automatically no. just because you get moved to a new assignment mm-hmm. or whatever like i think i wonder if in lay people's heads that we just automatically assume you just somehow magically change gears into like oh yeah he gets this and so he's he's on this path now and it's like nope the human side <laughs> of like just having a like like and, and it's never hit me and like i said it should have but for some reason it mm-hmm. hasn't until now then it's like they have to change gears. I mean, even parish um, to parish, I would imagine. And in, and in some ways, like in mine, being 13 years in specialty ministries with um, youth and young adults, um, you're, you're not even aware at first what those gears are that mm. need to change. But it, you get there. It's like a, you don't know what you don't know. Exactly. And then all of a sudden you find out what you don't know. It's mm-hmm. like, i got to figure this out now. 